So this video has been a long time coming. To anyone that doesn't read the full titles of videos, this is part 3 in a series of If the Central Powers, namely Germany, had won World War I. Part 1 was me setting up how Germany could have theoretically won. Part 2 was me outlining the Treaty of Geneva, the fictional peace treaty based on the real world demands that the Central Powers hoped to achieve after the real World War I. And part 3 here is a general explanation of what the world would look like in the years following the end of this fictional World War I. This video is going to be a little bit shorter than the first part and the second part, just because this is trying to wrap everything up a little bit, and most of the focus was on the first part, which was the war, and the second part, which was the treaty. I would recommend you watch part 1, but you at least need to watch part 2, because I'm going to be talking about a lot of things, assuming you've already watched through it. Alright, I'm going to assume you've watched it, and we're going to move on. So in the last video, it may have seemed like those demands were a bit ridiculous, and they honestly were. But that's also the point. Those demands outlined in the Treaty of Geneva were based on what the rulers of the Central Powers actually wanted out of the war, and this video is about the consequences of those extreme demands. So in an effort to not get repetitive with a lot of this, I'll talk about the victors together a little bit. A lot of these countries had very extreme demands, to the point where Bulgaria's size would increase by as much as 75%. Austria-Hungary would have taken over much of the Balkans, the Ottomans moved further into the Caucasus, and Germany took control of lands in both Eastern and Western Europe, either by directly taking control of it, or vassalizing the nation and turning it into a German princely. The issue that all of these countries would face is that this is no longer the age of burgeoning empires controlling different ethno-linguistic cultures. By the early 1900s, Europe was deep into the idea of nationalism and different peoples seeking recognition through their own country. There wasn't a lot of love for the idea of being subjugated by some larger power. Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire were already struggling, so adding new land to their domains would do nothing but accelerate their rate of decay. Austria-Hungary was already dealing with rebellious Serbs, so taking in the rest of Serbia would just make the problem better, right? <coughs> it's impossible to predict exactly what would happen. But what can definitely be said is that Austria-Hungary, as it was, could probably last no longer than a couple more decades before internal strife ripped it apart. The Ottomans were in a very similar situation, probably only to lengthen its life for a couple decades at most, specifically with the Arabs seeking some sort of independence for their own. With the Ottomans, it can be said that the Republic of Turkey today is the living embodiment of the Ottoman Empire's best case scenario and that's basically where I stand now, except maybe with the Sultan staying in power of an Ottoman Empire that physically resembles the Republic of Turkey, but it's hard to say what would happen in the ensuing chaos of a crumbling empire. Now let's move on to the German Empire, the most stable and powerful of the Central Powers. Because of this power, the Germans were in probably the best situation to handle their newly conquered lands but they also had the most to deal with, so their ability to succeed is just as questionable. The Poles, who had been directly integrated into Germany, and all of the newly formed vassal states in the Eastern Front, would likely be none too happy about the situation they were finding themselves in. Along with this were the problems they would face with forcing France into a semi-subservient state, and vassalizing Belgium. All of this is a lot to handle on its own, but that's not where the problems would end. Britain, being largely untouched by the war, at least in comparison to the other countries, would be in a much better place to support resistance to German rule. Them, alongside America, would very likely be supporting rebel factions and insurrections all across Europe to fight German control. One of the largest fronts of German versus British American resources would be in Russia, where the civil war would still be raging. The Germans, even though responsible for placing Lenin in Russia and ultimately starting the revolution, would be happier with a friendly monarch on the throne than a communist state right next to them. Any nations that opposed Germany, while certainly not communist sympathizers, would likely rather see a counterbalance to German power than another monarchy that would support German ambitions in Europe. So it's very possible you could see the strange scenario of Germany supporting white Russia 
and Britain and America supporting Red Russia. It's hard to say exactly what would happen, but it is very likely that the Reds would find themselves winning, considering they had already been predisposed to winning in our timeline, but it's hard to say. Now, I had mentioned France earlier, but let's talk a little more about them. France, following the Treaty of Geneva, would be struggling and very unstable. Considering their proclivity to revolution and overthrowing their current governments anyways, it's not unlikely that there would be another one. Following any sort of rebellion would be a struggle for power, and this is where the German Empire would see an opportunity to have a friendly monarch placed in power and would probably be working hard to have that be what happens. Fighting against them would be communists, socialists, nationalists, republicans, either working for their own interests or together, again with the help of Britain and America. Because of France's tendency to swing between republic and monarchy, it's very likely that monarchism would win out and Germany would be able to have someone take power that would generally be okay with the Kaiser sticking his nose in France's business. In the end, this is a very tricky scenario to look at holistically because there are so many different aspects to it. Of course, you would have separatists and rebels all across the newly conquered lands, and you would have foreign powers supporting them. But those countries only have so many resources to be supporting rebels across Europe, just like Germany only has so many resources to be fighting all these rebels, before having to concede defeat in certain areas. Now, a big question is, would this lead to another world war? probably, and considering there was a fair bit of luck required to have Germany win the first one, and a lot of time, money, and manpower would be spent in trying to control these newly conquered areas, it is very unlikely they would win another one. Ultimately, Austria-Hungary and the Ottomans were never in a position to survive a whole lot longer than they did, and Kaiser Wilhelm II was just too ambitious in his efforts to make Germany a world power as soon as possible, to not try and take every bit of land he could get his hands on it was likely never possible for the Central Powers to see any lasting victory following World War I, at least in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think would have happened in the comments below. This is, of course, my opinion based on research I did about something that never actually happened, so I'm sure you guys have your own thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, and if you want to see more, go ahead and hit subscribe. Ring the bell to stay notified, and follow my Twitter to stay up to date on whatever is going on with me or my channel. Thank you all very much for watching, this has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.